Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Let's say I'm holding a ball at some height in the air and I let go of the ball and my ball, each bounce that it takes, will bounce up to a height that is three-fourths as high as the bounce before it. So obviously each bounce is getting lower and lower and each bounce goes up to three-fourths the height of the previous one, like 75% as high as the previous one. This idea where the height of each bounce is three-fourths as much as the one before it. So here I have y equals three-fourths all to the power x. So if we imagine x is the number of bounces that have occurred already, so at the start it hasn't bounced yet. So we have a y equals three-fourths to the zero power. Remember anything to the zero is going to be one. And then after one bounce, it bounces three-fourths as high, so that's three-fourths to the one, and that just gives us three-fourths, right? Anything to the one is itself. So after two bounces, then it's going to bounce up to a height of y equals three-fourths squared, plugging in two for x. If we square the top and we square the bottom of that fraction, we'll get nine over 16. We keep going. Our third bounce, we would have three-fourths cubed, so three cubed on the top and four cubed on the bottom. That'll give us 27 over 64, and you could keep going as far as you want to figure out the height of as many bounces as you like, or you could simply just skip to a particular bounce by plugging that number in for x and figuring out what the height would be after that many bounces. When we have a function with the form y equals b to the x, or f of x equals b to the x, that's called an exponential function. This is likely very different than what you've been working with before this, so here our independent variable is in the exponent when we have an exponential function. Our b here is called the base. b needs to be a positive number and our base also needs to be a number that is really not equal to 1. We don't want that either. So some positive number that isn't 1 is going to be our base. Let's figure out why this is true. So first of all, what if we had y equals negative 5 to the x? Let's say we tried to assign a base of negative 5. Well, when we have an even power of a negative number, that's going to give us a positive number. And when we have an odd power of a negative number, that will give us a negative number. Problems are really going to occur with an exponential function where I can plug in not just whole numbers for x, but any number I want, fractions and decimals. Something pops up if we have something like, what is the power 2.47? We might be able to figure out a number, but what is the sign? Is it positive or negative? That makes that really difficult to deal with. Also, if we had a base of 1, think about what happens if you plug in any number for x. You get 1 to any power. That's just going to be 1, right? 1 to any power is going to be 1. And so this doesn't even really change. This is just what we would call a constant function. So this never changes values. It's not interesting. We've already talked about things like y equals 1. So we won't use 1 for a base either. So we really want our base to be a positive number that is not 1. Okay, now finding some points on the graph of our exponential function using y equals 2 to the x. Remember, we can always just plug in some values for x and see what we get for y, and that will give us some points. So I'll go ahead and use some numbers we would probably plug in. 1, 2, 3. Let's use 0. Let's also use some negative numbers. Negative 1, negative 2. Let's use negative 3 as well. So if I plug in 1 for x in my formula, then that means that y equals 2 to the 1 and we know anything to the 1 is itself, so we get 2 for y. So when I plugged in 1, I get 2 for y. Okay, 1 comma 2 is on our graph. Uh, plugging in 2 for x, that would be y equals 2 to the 2, 2 squared. We know that's 4, so I get 2 comma 4 on my graph. Plugging in 3, y equals 2 cubed. That will be 8. So when I plug in 3, I get 8 for y. Plugging in 0, remember this property, if I had 2 to the 0, any number to the 0, as long as the base is not 0, is going to give us 1. So this is going to be 0, 1 as a point. Plugging in negative 1, remember negative exponents just mean reciprocal, right? So when we take 2 to the minus 1, that's like saying 1 over 2 to the positive 1. That's going to be a half. So here we're going to go ahead and say negative 1 comma 1 half. And then if we plug in negative 2, 2 to the negative 2, that will be like reciprocal because we have a negative exponent of 2 squared. So that will give us 1 fourth. So we'll get a point of negative 2, 1 fourth. And then if we plug in negative 3, let's do our last one here, 2 to the negative 3, that will be like 1 over 2 cubed. 
and that will give us a value of 1 over 8. So when we plug in negative 3, we get 1 eighth. So you can see we keep getting fractions with negative numbers and they keep getting smaller and smaller. If we look at these and we plot these in the xy plane, we might notice, first of all, they're all above the x-axis, so that's kind of nice. We're just really showing above the x-axis here. I've got my table of things that I already plotted. I went ahead and wrote these as a decimal. And if I sort of imagine what it's going to look like as I plug in numbers between these as well, then you might notice we get a graph that sort of swoops up from just above the axis here and it gets taller and taller. It increases what we say exponentially, right, as we read from left to right. Let's do a similar thing now with a different exponential function. We have y equals one-third to the x, so let's just plug in some similar numbers here. So we'll use one and two and three, and then we'll use zero and negative one negative 2, negative 3 again. So if I plug in the first power, then y would equal 1 third to the 1. That's going to be just 1 third. If I plug in 2 for x, 1 third squared, then y is going to equal 1 over 9. If I plug in 3 for x, I will get 1 cubed on top, which is 1, and 3 cubed on the bottom, which is 27. So we get 1 over 27. So you can sort of see what's happening here when we plug in positive numbers for x in the exponent when we have a fraction in the base we're actually getting smaller and smaller numbers. Plugging in 0 we're going to get a similar thing we did before, right? We have something to the 0. 1 third to the 0 is just going to be 1, right, by properties of exponents. Now think about what happens here with the negative exponents. If I take a negative one exponent here, that's just going to give me the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of one third is going to give me three. Negative two, that tells me take the reciprocal and then square. So if I take the reciprocal of this, I'll get three. But then if I square that, my y value is going to be nine. And then for the last one, this says for an exponent, take the reciprocal and then cube it. So I'm going to take the reciprocal, that would be three. And then if I cube three, I actually get 27 for y. That's kind of big to graph. But let's go ahead and look at graphing some of these points. Um, so on my xy plane again, you'll notice they're all above the axis again. As I plug in the negative values, you notice I'm getting bigger numbers this time. When I plug in the positive values, I'm getting the smaller numbers this time. So if I connect these dots in a nice, smooth, connected graph here, then I get something that looks like it starts on the right side very close to the axis, and as we sort of go back to the left, it swoops up. This is a similar roller coaster that we had with 2 to the x, except we're riding the roller coaster in reverse. We're going from high to low now as we approach the axis from above. So some general qualities of exponential function graphs that you'll find. Your functions with bases that are greater than 1, so like our 2 to the x, that base was greater than 1, those will increase from left to right. Okay, A larger base means that the right side of the graph increases more quickly. So if we think about, I've got 2 to the x, that's my graph here. This uh, next graph here is 3 to the x, so you notice it gets taller values more quickly. Right, It reaches sky high more quickly than 2 to the x does. After it passes this 0, 1 point, you'll notice they all go through 0, 1. There's 5 to the x, and then I've also graphed 10 to the x. It gets tall very, very quickly. We don't have to go very far out to the right before it gets tall. That's sort of just a comparison of what happens when you change the bases with numbers that are bigger than 1. If you have numbers that are less than 1 with your base, remember they still need to be positive numbers, right? But positive numbers that are less than 1, so decimals less than 1 or fractions that are less than 1, um, then what happens with that? They will decrease from left to right, right? So it's like we're riding this roller coaster in reverse, going from high to low instead of low to high. And then a smaller base means that the right side gets close to the axis more quickly. So if I look at my 1 half to the x, you can see as after I go through this number, I don't get close to the axis quite as quickly as some of these other graphs down here. If I shift to a base of 1 third, you can see I get down closer to the axis more quickly. 1 fifth, that's even smaller than 1 third. We're getting close to the axis even more quickly. And then 1 tenth to the x, uh, you can see that's the, the smallest base that I've graphed here. It gets close to the x very, very quickly. We get close to the axis right about 1, where it takes until about 3 or 4 for 1 half to the x to actually get real close to the axis there. 
So you notice whether we're getting close to the axis on the left side of the graph or getting close to the axis on the right side of the graph, all of these exponential graphs, no matter what their base, these basic exponential graphs are getting really close to the horizontal axis. It turns out they don't ever actually touch that horizontal axis, the x-axis. They just get closer and closer, but they never actually touch it. And when we have that type of a line where a graph approaches that line and gets really, really close, microscopically close, so close that we can barely see any space between the graph and that line, and that is a horizontal line, then we call that a horizontal asymptote for our graph. So here the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote for my exponential functions because the graphs get really, really close to the x-axis, but they never actually touch the axis. Okay, everyone, hopefully that gives you an understanding of the basics of exponential functions, how to look at the graphs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.